the last question in section 9.1 is a really great question because you don't have to calculate the confidence interval. You have to use computer program output of that confidence interval to ask a bunch of questions or answer a bunch of questions. This is very much the kind of thing that I love to put on exams. So let's read it. In 2009, JC, Jackson College, conducted a Noel Levitt student satisfaction survey of a random sample of JC students. Students were asked if they were pursuing an associate's degree. The confidence interval for the population proportion output from the StatCrunch um, computer program is below. And um, the two big programs I use are StatCrunch and Minitab. So um, in this case, they were both kind of easy to read, so it didn't really matter which one I picked. So be prepared for either one to show up. All right, so um, if you're doing this in the fall of 2014, I actually had the questions in the wrong order. So all the questions from the page are on here, but they're kind of in a different order than I originally had them on the page. And I will fix that for a later semester. So if you're in a later semester, you're wondering what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. All right, so what is the confidence interval? Let's start with that. That should be the first question. So the confidence interval is this part over here, which is 0.630854. 0 0.6308554 comma 0 0.71443608 and in general we don't probably bother with that many decimal places we we'll probably round to four decimal places or so all right so there they are and I'm going to highlight those in the box so you can see them one second there we have them I have them both in green so you can kind of see that now we want to compute the point estimate of the true proportion of all JC students pursuing an associate's degree. Well, if you recall, the point estimate for a confidence interval for proportions is p hat, which is x over n. This is the formula. x was, now let's look at the computer output. x was 300 and n was 446. And that would give us a sample proportion of 300 divided by 446, about 0.6726. And there we have it. All right, so that's using the formula. But it also said to find it two ways. So I'm going to actually use the idea about what a confidence interval is. So it's got a low end here at 0 0.630855. Then it has a high end here of 0.7144. So hypothetically speaking, I should be able to add up those two numbers, the low number and the high number, add them up and divide by two, and I should be able to get the middle, the center. Okay. Now, to keep all my accuracy when I do this, I'd probably better off using the full 8554 and um, the other number, which was 7, what is it, 7144 Okay. Because I've rounded, and if I use the rounded numbers, I might be a little bit off. So let me grab my calculator, and I'm going to make that disappear so I can see this. All right, so 0 0.6308554 plus 0 0.7144360. Add those up, then divide by 2, and you get 0.6726. Look at that. All right, so now let me get that going in the formula. So let me write that up. So p hat is equal to the low value plus the high value divided by 2. So let me see here. So I take my lower, which is 0 0.6308554 plus 0 0.7144368. I add them up, I divide by 2, and I will have the middle which is 0.6726. So I'm not using the formula per se, I'm using the idea that the point estimate is the center. Right? Point estimate is the middle of the interval. Right? Using that idea, I add up divide by 2 and I've got my center. Easy as that. All right, now let's compute the margin of error. And you can see I have them labeled with those little E's and the green brackets here. So the error is the distance from that point estimate in the center to that outer edge. Or in other words, it's half the interval. Because the interval is the distance between these two numbers, and then you take half of that. 
Okay, now I've typed all this up. So the error is half the width of the interval, remember, from way back. So to find the width of the interval, you take the higher number, which is 0 0.71443608, you subtract the lower number, which is 0 0.6308554, and then you divide by 2. So you subtract and divide by 2. So remember to find the center, we added them up and divide by 2. I, I redid it here so you could see it. So I did it all in one step. So now I could do the difference, 71443608 minus 0 0.6308554. I subtract them because I'm going to get that distance. I'm going to divide by 2, and I'll get 0 0.04179. So about 0 0.0418, so approximately. All right, that's all well and good. So now that's the margin of error that way. Let's find it another way. We could also find it by taking the high number, 0.7144, and subtracting that middle p hat in the center, because the error is the distance from the high to the middle. So if I take point, 0 0.7144308 and I subtract away the center, which is 0 0.67264, right? I'll get 0 0.0418 that way. Or I could do 0 0.67264, take away 0 0.6308554, there's the low end, so the middle take away the low number, and again I get, I get about 0 0.0418. Now I've got a little bit of rounding issue here, but since I only want four decimal places or so, it's fine. So this one's the high number minus the center, high value, the far right minus the center p hat, or you could take the center minus the low value. And again, you'll get approximately 0 0.0418. 0 0.0418. And I don't really care which way you find it. Um, these two down here are a little bit prone to rounding error because if you rounded your 0 0.6726 or if you found heaven forbid, you found your 0 0.6726 incorrectly, then you're in trouble. Keep in mind that when you're finding the center, you better find a number that's between the low number and the high number. If you do this calculation and you end up with like 0.79, that is a red flag that you did something wrong, because your number better be Goldilocks. It better not be not too high, not too low, better be just right, right in the middle. So when you find that number, if you find it correctly, then to find your error, um, you just subtract it from the high number or subtract the low number from the middle. Or if you want to be really careful, take the difference between the high and the low and divide it by 2. All right, now I want to compute the standard error of the sample proportion showing all work. Well, standard error of the sample proportion is a formula that we learned in section 8.2. The formula we learned was standard error for the proportion, p hat. And back then we learned that it was p, but the problem is we don't generally know our population parameter p. So we'll have to get away with the square root of p hat 1 minus p hat over n, which is square root of now we just found p hat is 0.6726, and then 1 minus 0 0.6726, and divide it by our n, and our n value, if you remember, was the total, which is 446. All right, 446. So I'm going to use the calculator. I'll clear all this out. So I want the square root. 0 0.6726, parentheses, 1 minus 0 0.6726, close your parentheses, divided by 446, enter. Then I get about 0 0.0222. There we have it. All right, now what is our confidence level? The confidence level is kind of obvious. It's up at the top. It says that it's 94%. See it up there? 
All right, there's my confidence level, and I even highlighted it for you with this little orange box here. It's right up there, that little orange box. Now, don't confuse confidence interval, that's the interval lower to upper, with the confidence level. Confidence level is how certain you are that your true population parameter is somewhere in there, in that interval that you've made. So it's 94%. So because of that, we now need to find our critical value, showing all work. Now that we have done before earlier in the section. So what you do is you say, okay, if my confidence level is 94%, that's 0.94. That means that alpha is the complement of the confidence level. Complement of confidence level. Remember, complements from chapter 5. So that makes it 0.06, because together they have to add up to 1. All right, then that means that alpha over 2, which is the area in both your tails, is 0.03. Then you draw a curve, a normal curve. You put 0.03 in each of the tails and label it as alpha over 2. Then you put 0.96, or excuse me, 94, right in the middle. Because that's the area in that center. Hold on one second, I forgot to put it in there. There we go. So the middle is 0.94, the tails are each 0.03. You're looking for the z-score. You really don't care which one you find, but in general, you find the one on the right, which is z.03. That's your z-alpha over 2. So you're looking for the one on the right. Now you can find this with inverse norm. And remember, inverse norm always takes left tail area. So if it wants the left tail area, it doesn't want 0.03. It wants 0.97 because 0.03 this whole white region in here, plus 0 .0, me, 0.94 plus 0 0.03. The whole white region plus the whole left-hand tail will make 0.97. So let me show this to you. So second, number three, inverse norm, 0.97, 0 and 1, enter, and you get 1.881. If you do it again, just to show you. You could use 0.03 if you like. It's not finding the correct one, it's finding its opposite. That'll be the one on the left hand side. And then you just reverse it for the positive one because what you're looking for is positive because it's positive 0.03. So 1.881. Now, will I give you one on the exam for sure that you have to find like this? Yes, I will. But you no longer have to find this one or 1.96, 2.576, or 1.645 here. The ones that we found right oops, there it is, this page. So these three you now know. You don't ever have to find them again unless I ask you to show um, find them again by hand showing all work. Unless I tell you to do that, you don't have to do it. You can just have these numbers. And I said in the previous video, but I'll say it again, you don't have to have them on your note sheet. That'll make sense to you in a little bit. There's a way to get to these a different way, um, which I'll show you. But if it's not one that's in your um, quick sheet that I'll show you in, in another video, then you're going to have to do it by hand. You will have at least one on the exam that you must do by hand. You have to draw a picture, you have to shade the tails, all that good stuff. And then you have to show your calculator entry, that's right here and then your final result. All right, we're all done with section 9.1. We now know how to read computer output and answer a whole bunch of questions about that computer output. And we realize that might be very handy for exams and other items. All right, I'll see you back here for section 9.2. That's when we're going to make confidence intervals again, but it's going to be for the mean instead of proportions.